Hi, and welcome to Home Tech Adventure. In this video, I'll show you the easiest and fastest way to back up the SSD on your computer. Note that this method only works with SSDs. If you have a hard disk, I suggest that you use the other method using a disk to image clone. I have the video for that listed in the description. The problem is, for Clonezilla to do a direct clone easily, the disk that you clone to needs to be the same size or larger than the disk it came from. Hard disks over time age and bad sectors are locked out by the system. Because of that, an old hard disk that's been used in your system will never be exactly the same size as your backup disk and likely will be a bit smaller than your backup disk. So if you're trying to clone back from your backup disk using Clonezilla, this will not work easily. With SSDs, this is not a problem because SSDs are over-provisioned. So they are essentially always the same size within their lifetime. To really make this work properly, you need two identical SSDs. It is best when you plan to build or upgrade a system to buy two SSDs that are exactly the same. That way you can use this method, which is definitely the fastest and easiest method. Today I will be cloning a drive on this computer to an identical drive in this external case. You can use an SSD without a case using a USB dongle like this one, but I don't recommend it. The SSD is much less likely to suffer damage in a case. You will also need a bootable Clonezilla USB. I created this one in another video and it's linked in the description if you need to know how to do that. To start from the Clonezilla USD, you will need to hold down the key that gives you access to your computer's boot menu. This varies by computer. I have linked two tables in the description that will likely work for just about any computer that you have. If the information in those tables is not sufficient, then do your own research with your own computer doing a search on the internet. Sometimes the computer will even tell you at startup which key to press to access the boot menu. Note that for this process, it's better to use a wired keyboard because you can just put your finger on the relevant key and hold it down during startup. If you use a wireless keyboard, it may still work, but you may have to repeatedly press the key during startup to get to the boot menu. If you put your Clonezilla USB into the computer while Windows is running, it will come up with an error message and ask you to reformat. Just click cancel. Restart the computer and hold down the proper key for your boot menu to activate Clonezilla. Let me go into the computer and I'll show you how this works. Welcome back. Let's clone this hard disk. I've already booted up the computer and I've inserted the Clonezilla USB. Let's do a restart and start from that Clonezilla USB. I'm going to hold down the F12 key because on my Gigabyte motherboard that I have in this computer, F12 will get me to the boot menu. Let me do a restart and I'll be back when we're booted up. So you can see we are in the boot manager and you can use the mouse. I prefer to use the keyboard arrow keys and the enter key. We can enter the BIOS setup or we can boot from the normal Windows, uh, Windows uh, operating system, but we want to boot from UEFI PMAP. It doesn't say Clonezilla, but whatever. That's the one that we want. And you can see we get into Clonezilla. Now with Clonezilla, I'm going to do it in the default settings, but you can do other settings too. Um, a lot of times I will go into, um, oh, let's see, other modes for Clonezilla Live. I will go to some of these uh, other settings a lot of times I'll do it to RAM. One time I had to do the safe graphics settings, but we're going to 
go back and do it with the default settings at 800 and 600. This is really an old interface, but this system works very, very well. So let's take a look. Go into there. And it's starting Clonezilla. This does take a little bit of time to do. It will start up eventually, hopefully. If it doesn't, we're going to have to do this again with the other modes. There we go. Finally, it's starting up. Now, at this point, you can just choose whichever language that you need. I am using English, so I'm going to use English. Keep the keyboard default, US keyboard. You can change it if you have a foreign keyboard. And start Clonezilla. Now, I'm not going to start yet because I haven't yet connected the drive that I'm going to clone to. And the reason I haven't done that is because the operating system that Clonezilla works on is a Linux operating system. Because there's only one drive connected along with the USB drive, they're going to be SBA and SBB. There's going to be two drives. I want the drive that I'm cloning to to be the last on the list. Because remember, I got identical drives. It's hard to tell the difference. But if I connect the drive that I'm going to clone to now, it will absolutely be the last drive on the list. So let me connect that and I'll be right back. All right, I've connected the drive. Now let's start Clonezilla. I just hit enter. And we're going to do device to device. We're going to do disk to disk. This is the simplest version. So we'll use that. Beginner mode is fine for this. Disk to local disk is what we want because we're, we're cloning a disk to the exact same copy. And it takes a while to check the disks and to catalog all the disks that are in the system that are available to clone. And you can see we got the exact same one. So we got SDA, I said B before, I meant D, SDA and SDC. They look nearly identical. SDA is our original one. That's the one we're going to clone from and we're going to clone to the SDC disk. So we'll click there. That's the source disk. And we won't have much option for the destination disk. It'll be the, the only option. There's only one disk left. So this is our destination option. I'll click that. Okay, now skip checking and repairing uh, source file system. Uh, you can check if you want, interactively check and repair or auto repair if you want. But honestly, with something this simple, you can just do the skip check. That's what I usually do on this type of clone. And choose reboot or shutdown. Let's choose reboot or shutdown. I'll show you what that looks like at the end. You can have it just reboot or just shut down if you want, but I'm going to choose and I'll show you what that looks like at the end. So we'll do that and press enter to continue. We will do that. And it goes through a whole bunch of stuff. Now it's going to confirm that you really want to do this. You really want to erase that disk and replace it with the clone. Yes, we do. And they're going to ask you again, are you absolutely sure? Yes, we are. We'll put that in. And now we wait. Now the first part of the clone will go really quickly. SDA1, SDA2. Um, these are partitions on the drive. There's five partitions that they found, that uh, the system found, that um, Windows has created. This was just a fresh window installed just a few weeks ago. So it's the basic Windows system, the uh, system partition, there's the data partition, there is the uh, recovery partitions and that type of thing. So these first few will go very quickly because these, uh, the system partition, the um, recovery partition, they're really teeny tiny. When it gets to the data partition, it'll take a little bit more time. So let's wait here. We should be getting to the data partition pretty soon here. Nope, that's not the data partition. That one went really fast. And let's see, that one is cloned successfully. Now we're getting to, okay, this is the um, data partition. Now, uh, this drive doesn't have much on it, so the data partition also goes really quickly. But you might have to walk away and come back um, with the data partition. Well, I guess that wasn't the data partition. I think this is the data partition. That was preparing the data partition. All right, so you can see it's climbing up in the percentages, but it's slow. So we'll come back when the, when the clone is finished. We're coming to the end of the data blocks and the total block process should actually catch up pretty quickly. There it did. 
And we should go on to the last partition, which is a recovery partition. And that should take almost no time at all. It's a very small one. Let's take a look here. Let's see, it's sinking now. Let's see if it goes on to the other partition. Or maybe they'd save the bigger partition for last. I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Was successfully cloned. So we'll go on to the next partition. Let's see what happens. Yes, there is the last partition. Again, should take no time at all because that last partition is a recovery partition, very small. And so it took almost no time at all. That should be all the partitions. So let's take a look at this. All right, it's finishing up, doing all its tuning, and when it finishes, we should have a good clone. All right, it's all done. And now we can choose what we want to do next. I'm going to choose to shut down or power off as they call it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the clone disk in the system and see if it actually boots up with the clone disk in place of the original disk that we had. Let me reboot and I'll be back. All right. Now that I've installed the cloned disk in the system, let me press the start button and see if it starts up properly. Let me do that. There we go. Let's see if it boots with the other drive in there. We got the splash screen and let's see, Windows starting up. put in my little code and there we go. We are in the system and you can see we have everything that we had before. We got our whole system. It's exactly as if nothing happened. The, the computer doesn't know that it's a different disk because it's the exact same thing. Now you could do this with a smaller disk to a larger disk as well, but really there's better options if you have a larger disk, a disk image, and we'll do that in another video. If you have exactly the same size disk, this works great. With a slightly larger disk, there's probably a better way to do it. Going to a bigger disk, to a smaller disk, Clonezilla does not do that. At least doesn't do it easily. It's really complicated and there are better tools if you have to do that. And we'll cover that in, an, in another uh, video as well. I almost forgot one thing. What if you have your cloned drive like this and you want to connect it up either with a little dongle like this, or maybe you put it in a case like I showed you before, but you connect it up and you wanna just get a file or two off of that cloned drive. You don't need to clone the whole thing because you just misplaced a file or you deleted a file accidentally. How do you get it off your cloned drive? Let's connect it up and see what happens. There, I've now connected the drive. Do you see any difference? I don't either. Let's go to Windows Explorer and see what we have. Oh, Windows Explorer doesn't show it either. Uh, there's no drive. If we go into this PC, we only have one drive. So what's up? Are, is it not working? Actually, it is. When we made the clone, it cloned everything, including the drive letter. And Windows will not have two drives with the same drive letter. That doesn't work. So what we have to do is assign a new drive letter or basically get Windows to assign it for us. If I go into disk management, and what we're looking for, you can go here, but create and format hard disk partitions is what we're looking for. And if you look, there are two disks actually attached here, but the disk one is offline. Now, all we have to do to get Windows to assign a drive letter for us 
is right click and choose online and it will assign a drive letter. So there we go, it assigned letter D to the drive. Now if you prefer not to have it be letter D, you can right click on here and change drive letters and paths. Click change and click whichever drive letter that you would prefer for this cloned drive. Hit cancel, cancel, because I don't want to change the drive letter at the moment. But there you go. If we open Windows Explorer, you can see the local disk shows up. And on this PC, we got the two drives. The C drive, the, the one that's installed, and the D drive, which is the clone. So if you wanted to, you could take a file from the D drive and copy it over to the C drive in case you had deleted something. I hope you enjoyed this home tech adventure. Please comment below. Tell me your story. What do you use for backup? What, do you what would you like to see for backup scenarios? I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and come back and see us again.